the new combine photos feature can be found under the image menu so simply click the top menu image and combine photos and that brings up this new dialogue which has been specially created by adobe for compositing parts of different images into one overall piece of work so i'm going to select um, i want uh, this to be three by two so i have to select two by three which is the portrait version and if I open the photo bin and right click on the template I can rotate it and that gives me the 3.2 aspect ratio that I that I want so let's close the photo bin down and we can start to um, import photos by clicking on computer and I'm going to bring in this woodland scene which I'm going to use as my background and let's import that it takes a few seconds and that fills the um, the template which is exactly what i want um, so i'm going to click um, the computer again to bring in my first image of the cat and open this and that brings it in and I'm, now i'm going to go at bottom right here to the edit button and i'm going to use this auto effect which is the rem remove background and um, as you can see, that extracts the cat quite well, although it's left behind a little bit of the chair. So I need to use this hide brush here to um, to paint that out. And I'm just going to paint over it gently, removing that arm of the chair from the um, from the background. If you go a little bit too far, you can add it back in again by just coming here. Just like this. Just trying to keep the cat's face. I've gone too far again. Let's bring it back. And hide. And just going like to go right up to the edge. I think that's okay for the purpose of this um, exercise. So that's, um, that's uh, done. So I can click on the button done and I get the bounding box and I can start to resize and reposition the cat where I want it. I want it perched up against the tree, something like that. That's fine. So I'm going to click the blue check mark and then I'm going to go back to import and then bring in the other photo I'm using, which is the photo of the dog that opens up the, um, the the second image and again I'm going to go to the edit button and choose remove background and in this case it does a good job straight away without me having to um, hide or reveal anything so I'm going to click done and I'm going to actually flip him around this time I want him facing the other way so it looks like he's looking down at the um, at the cat and if I click on here, I get the bounding box and can move him around and reposition him. I'm going to make him a little bit smaller in size, so he's more more proportionate to the um, to the cat, and put him um, somewhere like this in the photo. Just yeah, I think that's probably um, probably good. We'll leave him there anyway. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I think you get the the idea. And what we can do now is go into this uh, final uh, interface, which is called Match Tone. And we have this Auto button. So I'm going to click that. It takes a little bit of time to, um, to do the converting of colors and to try and match the uh, foreground subjects to the, um, to the background. So if you just bear with me, I just wait for this to finish. And um, if you're not completely happy with the auto results, you can tweak it afterwards using the, um, the sliders. As it's a little bit slow. It will depend on your own computer and um, how much RAM and GPU you have. And, and there's the result. Um, so I might just give it a little bit of contrast, just push up the contrast slightly. But it's sort of um, picking up the brightness from the background and... Um, and that's fine, I think. So I'm going to click on Save. And I'm going to save this as a PSD. And I'll just call it um, Dog Cat Comp. 
and save it. And the reason for saving it as a PSD is because um, I can always go back to the layers and tweak them and um, and refine edges if necessary. But on this one, it looks perfectly okay to me. So I'm going to click done, and um, I will save that as a um, as a JPEG. But I can always go to the PSD if I if I want to uh, see all the layers. So I'm going to click don't save because I already have a PSD copy. And let's have a look at another image. So I'm going to back, go back to the image menu and once again choose Combine Photos. And this time I'm going to use 3 by 2 again. So I need to go back to the photo, be in right click and rotate. And that gives me the aspect ratio that I want. And I'm going to import from computer. And I'm going to use this um, Christmas scene to make a family portrait. Um, just bringing that in. And there it is, a nice little um, lounge scene with a Christmas tree. Not quite sure this fits. So I'm going to just drag this to the left slightly and click the blue check mark. And I think that, yeah, that, that looks pretty um, pretty good to me. So let's import the subject now. And, uh, this is the one I'm looking for, mother and child, or grandmother and child, I, I should say. And let's go to the edit button at the bottom and extract, remove, remove the background. And again, it's not a pretty, pretty good job. I'm not quite sure it's got the hair perfectly, but um, I'll show you how to deal with that. Um, for the moment, I will click done. And what I'm going to do is um, click on save and save this as a PSD file. I'll just call it Xmas for the time being and um, and say now I can click done and I'm going to just close this down because I've got the saved PSD so I'll click and I'm going to open that Xmas PSD now so open um, combine photos and it should be at the end here somewhere there it is And the reason for doing this is because it preserves all the layers and the mask. If you click on the Done, but done button, um, Adobe kind of combines and flattens the image out and you lose the, you lose the mask. So I'm going to hold down the um, Command key, that's the Control key on Windows, and click inside this mask. And that reselects the, um, the original selection. So what I can do now is I can go to the Select menu and choose Refine Edge. And I'm going to put a check mark in Smart Radius and just increase the, um, the the radius a little bit. And that's improved the hair almost immediately. I can use this edge detection brush and, um, and paint just thinly over this edge. And um, yeah, that brings back a little bit of the spiky, um, the, the, the spiky hair. I'll just try on this side as well and see whether we get any improvements. I'm not quite sure whether that improves it, but um, uh, I think we can use that. There's a little bit going on down here as well, which needs tidying up, I think. Yeah. I'm going to also put decontaminate colours in and see whether we can get rid of this fringing. It's starting to improve it. It's not absolutely um, perfect. Go around here, around the baby's foot. Yeah, that's done a much better better job. I mean, I think that will probably blend in with the new background. So I will, I will leave it. And I'm going to choose here, output to a new layer with a layer mask and click OK. And um, that will just take a few um, seconds. And as you can see, the original um, uh, mask and layer has been disabled and this new one has been created with the adjustments. I can actually click within the mask and paint with a black brush and then just get rid of this spike here that's sticking up and that's gone. I think that's much better and um, what I can do now is use the, um, the, the move tool and resize this and reposition and then just drag it down to the bottom here and move it um, sort of close to the chair and click done and click on the hand tool to, yeah we've got a little bit of a shadowing here so it looks sort of fairly natural and I'm quite happy with that so I'm going to click on um, save 
and that one's done. Save it again as the Xmas PSD and overwrite it by clicking replace. And I can always make a JPEG at any time from the from the PSD file. So that's the second example done. Let's look at an example this time using Adobe Stock, and I've chosen the 916 vertical portrait aspect ratio. And I'm going to click on the stock button now and choose a nature background. Um, this one here, I think, is quite nice, and it downloads and starts to place it into the into the template. License for free. I'm clicking on that button. And that removes any Adobe watermarking. Um, and I'm going to actually now um, resize this so it fits the, um, the template, which is, um, as I say, vertical. Um, it's probably going to stretch the, um, the photo a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it's the background. So, um, so this is the image I want to use. And I'm going to click Open. And... Um, there it comes in, and I'm going to go to Edit now and use the Remove Background. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job of um, of bringing in the image. I just need to um, click on Done, and I can do a little bit of resizing again, um, bringing that down to the to the bottom, something like that. I think it works quite well. And um, what I'm going to do now is do as I did before and click on save to create a PSD file. And um, I'll just call this a man. And click on save and that will save it in the um, same f folder. And I can click on done. As you can see, I said before, when you click on done, Adobe kind of um, flattens out the layer mask and gives you a composite photo which loses the um, ability to change the the layer and refine the edges. So I'm going to close this down as I did previously without saving and open that man PSD file. So let's look for it. I think I must have missed out the A. It's MN PSD, so there we are. Let's open it up anyway. And um, I'm going to, again, command and click or control click on Windows on the layer. And I'm going to use Select and Refine Edge and try and improve this this hair. You can see some of the green background from the original photo is is showing, few, showing through. So I'm going to, again, check, check Smart Radius and move up the... Um, smart radius a little bit and that kind of um, highlights a little bit too much let's go back a bit see whether whether that improves it and I'm going to use this tool and start painting over just increase the brush size a little bit I'm going to just paint over these green bits which have been left behind from the from the original photo Let's use decontaminate colors. It's starting to remove all these extra little green bits and um, make a better job. This refine edge dialog, sometimes it's a combination of using the smart radius and the other sliders like um, uh, like shift edge and um, and, and, and contrast, uh, but we eventually get something that's acceptable. So let's try a little bit of shift edge, move it out a little bit, and that goes the wrong way. So let's go back a bit. Yeah, this is starting to look better. And I'm going to put in some contrast now. Just gently moving up the contrast slider. Maybe the smooth. A couple of little bits down here that are still showing through. But as the background of the new photo is green, I think that's not going to show up. So let's again say I put a new layer with layer mask, and that will disable the original layer. 
And there, there we have it, it's coming in and um, the original layer has been disabled and I think that's a very good result actually. I'm quite pleased with that. So um, as you can see, this new compositing dialog allows you to use Adobe Stock. Um, I should say also, as well as um, uh, accessing this tool from the image menu, it's also available in the guided under Photo Merge. And it's this top left here, Combined Photos, as you can see. This is a mock-up from the Adobe team, and it's the image used in the guided edits. And this one they've made using um, different um, images and um, this kind of text music score. And this is the final version. As you can see, there's no limitation, just your own imagination.